Hello everyone, welcome back to another day of kindergarten and first grade math. I'm Miss Prescott, one of the first grade teachers at South Shore Pre-K-8 in Rainier Beach, and I am so happy to be here with you for a third day of math fun. We've done a lot of work the past two days, and today we're going to do even more. So let's go ahead and look to see what we have on our agenda today. All right, so we are going to get started just like the other two days with our math game. On number one there, it says math game, make it 10. So we learned to play make it 10 with our fingers the first day. On the second day, we play with objects from around our house like pine cones. And today you're gonna learn to play it with numbers and we're gonna use number cards. I'll show you how to do that. Then second, we are going to do a new read aloud called the best vacation ever. And we'll read that together. After we're done, we will do third, our third thing, will be math movement. So we'll get up, we'll move our body as we count, like we have the other days, but today we're gonna to be counting up a little bit higher. And the last activity we will do together is quick images. So as you remember, those were images or pictures I put up on the screen that you get to look at and see and try to figure out how many of something are on there. We've looked at elevator buttons, humbau, and um, dots. So today we'll have two new pictures to look at. And as we're doing all of this, we are remembering our mathematical practice, which is to model with mathematics. That also means that we can show our work in many ways. So we're thinking about how we can show our thinking and our work in many ways as we play our game, do our read aloud, and um, look at those quick images. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our day. We are gonna play Make It 10 again today. On the first day, we played this game using our fingers. On the second day, we learned how to play it using objects around our house like uh, pine cones. And today we're gonna learn how to play it using number cards. So for number cards, what you can do is grab a deck of cards, if you've got these, and go through the deck and find the numbers you need. So in a deck of cards, there's not a one, but there's another one called an ace, and you can use that and just say that that is a one, all the way up to 10, if you'd like. If you don't have a deck of cards, that's totally okay. You can grab a piece of paper and something to write with, a marker, crayons, colored pencils, whatever you have. And you can use the paper and fold it into squares. And when you're folding it, if you really um, tighten your fingers as you go along the crease like this. It makes it easier to um, kind of break them apart to make those squares so you don't even actually need scissors. So once you have eight squares, you can go ahead and write the number, or sorry, nine or ten squares. If you want to do numbers one through ten, ten squares, you can write all your numbers on there and make number cards that way. All right, we're gonna get started demonstrating how to play Make It 10 using number cards. And Penguin's here again today to help me out. So you'll take your number cards, I'm gonna use the ones from the deck, and you're going to um, shuffle them, mix them all up so that you don't go in order. All right, so let's go ahead. And Penguin's gonna flip one over for me. And what do we have, Penguin? We've got a seven. So seven is the amount that we have. We know we have seven, but we need to make 10. So what's a strategy we can use to figure out how many more we need to make 10? So if we have seven, put seven up. Oh, I remember that strategy where I can count the amount of fingers that I don't have up yet to figure out how many more to make 10. So let's count those. I have one, two, three down. So I'm gonna put three up and see if that makes 10. One, two, three. Did that make 10? I think it did, because I have all my fingers up. But let's double check. Remember, we're talking about our mathematical practice of showing our work many ways. So here's another way for us to show it by counting it all and making sure they're all there. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Very good. All right, let's try another one. What is it this time, Mr. Penguin? It is four. 
How many more do we need to make 10? So if we have four, we need to make 10. Mm. Thinking about that other strategy we talked about yesterday, where we think about what we already know. So we already know we need 10, and we already, we, so we know we need 10, and we know we already have four. So I'm gonna put down four. One, two, three, four. Now how many are left? Let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six are left, so I'm gonna put those four back up. Three, four. So does four plus six equal 10? It looks like it does, but let's again practice, um, use our math practice and show our work in multiple ways. Let's count it to make sure, count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, let's try one more. But this time I'm gonna play with my homemade number cards and see what we get. All right, mixing them up. Okay. All right, Penguin, what do we get? Ooh, we get eight. So we have eight. How many more do we need to make 10? So we have eight. I'm gonna count up eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many more do we need to make 10? I'm gonna try that counting on or counting up strategy we've tried. So I'm gonna hold eight in my head and count up to 10. So everybody put that eight in your head. Eight, nine, 10. How many more do we get? Two. All right, let's try that one. So we're gonna put up eight fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we said two more. One, two, did that make 10? It sure did, but let's double check our work and count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Awesome job, everyone. I hope you've had fun learning how to play Make It 10 this week. You've got lots of different ways you can play now with your fingers, with objects, with your number cards. Remember, this is a great game because you can play it at home. You can play it on a walk. You can play it at the grocery store. You can play it pretty much anywhere. And I've taught you ways where you can play it with a partner and you can play it by yourself. So it's a great one to be practicing. There's one other part about this game that I forgot to mention. And that is that you don't always have to make 10. You can change the target number. So we've been working on the target number of 10 but you could change and say, oh, I wanna make the target number eight, or I wanna make the target number 13, and you have to figure out how many more you would need to make 13. All right, give it a try, have fun, and thanks for joining me on playing this game this week. Our book today is called The Best Vacation Ever. It is by Stuart J. Murphy, who is the author of the other books we've read this week and it's illustrated by Nadine Bernard Westcott. In this story, this little girl and her family try to figure out where they should go on vacation. She uses some different types of math to help them figure that out. So as we read today, we're gonna to think about our math practice, which is I can show my work in many different ways. And we're gonna think about the ways that she shows her work or her thinking to help her family figure out where they are gonna go on vacation. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The best vacation ever. My family's very busy. We always rush about. Mom is coming in when dad is going out. Charlie has his buddies. Grandma never takes it slow. We need a great vacation but we don't know where to go. Maybe if I ask some questions and write down the answers too, then we'll have some charts that will tell us what to do. So right here, the little girl's starting to write down mom, dad, grandma. She's leaving some space to put some more information. Let's see what she, what kind of work she puts there, what her thinking is. 
Should we go somewhere warm? Mom says, I'd like it cool, not hot. Dad and Grandma and her brother say, it's warm here and we like it. The little girl says, so we want a nice warm spot. She figured that out. She wrote, Mom, Dad, Grandma, Charlie, and me. And then she made two columns, one that says warm and one that says cold. So she put an X next to what the person's vote was, what they wanted to do. So it looks like the most people in her family, four of them, all wanted a warm place and only mom wanted a cool place. Mm, let's see what other questions she asks to figure out where they should go. Should we travel somewhere far? Charlie and, or let's see, dad and mom both say, we, and grandma say, we want a place that's near. And Charlie and her say, the two of us would like to go somewhere that's far from here. So let's look at this chart. We've got all the names of the family members. And then if they want to go far away or somewhere near, somewhere close by where they live. So it looks like mom, dad, and grandma want to stay near. So that's how many people? Let's count it. One, two, three. But then Charlie and her, how many is that? One, two, want to go far. So how many more people want to go? near than want to go far. It looks like there's three against two. Hmm, where will they go? What about excitement? See, mom and dad say, we'd like some quiet and some rest. And the rest of them say, we have such a good time here that a fun place would be best. So let's look at that next chart. It's got all the people in the family and then fun or quiet. Mom and dad want quiet, but then grandma, Charlie, and the little girl want somewhere fun. Hmm, so let's see how many want fun. One, two, three against one, two that want quiet. Hmm, what kind of place will they go? Could Fluffer come with us? Dad thinks that could be hard to do. Mama and Grandma and Charlie say, it won't be the same without him. The little girl says, and cats need vacations too. So here's their chart that shows how they feel about bringing the cat with them. Let's see, the only person to say no is dad. Everybody else wants Fluffer the cat to come. Let's count to see how many want Fluffer the cat to come. One, two, three, and four. Four against one. Hmm. What will happen next? Now I'll add my numbers and see just what they show. So here she's showing all of her thinking, all of her charts for the different questions that she asked about warm versus cold, far or near, fun or quiet, and bring the cat or not bring the cat. So it looks like she showed which one was the most popular, which one had the most votes by circling it. So it looks like they want to go somewhere warm that's nearby, that's fun, and where the cat can go. I hmm. wonder what kind of place that's going to be. After looking at my charts, I know exactly where to go. Warm, near, fun, and fluffer can come too. Hmm, where will that be? To find the perfect place wasn't really very hard. Looks like they're going camping in a tent. Where at? Our best vacation ever is right here in our backyard. Ooh, so they didn't have to go very far to find a great vacation spot. The end. All right. So we saw in this book that the little girl was able to use charts to see the different things that her family wanted. And she showed her work by writing down what she found out from each one of those things and then adding them all up to figure out the perfect vacation 
the best vacation ever for her and her family. And they ended up in their backyard having lots of fun together. Very cool. Awesome. All right. Hope you enjoyed our read alouds this week. Today we're gonna get fit and have some fun as we count to 120 by ones. We've counted to 100, we've counted to 110, and today we're gonna challenge ourselves by counting to 120. So that means every time we hit a decade number, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and 110, we are gonna change up the movement. So let's get ready, make sure you're counting with me and getting your body moving. All right, let's get started with rainbow arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shoulder shrugs. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Arm circles. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Elbow pumps, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Arm lifts, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Toe touches, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. March in place, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Twist, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. Calf lift, uh, raises. We're going to lift up our bodies like this. 81, 82. 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. Clap above our heads. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Now jog in place. 101. 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110. All right, this is our last 10. Rainbow arms, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120. Very nice. Good job challenging yourself these past three days. Make sure to keep counting while you're at home. And this is one of many ways that you can practice that. Have fun. Our last activity is quick images. We've been doing these throughout the week. And when we do quick images, we look at some images or pictures. And we try to figure out how many of the how many of the object that's in the image we see and how we saw it. So that means that I'm gonna put up a picture, an image right here, very quickly for four seconds. And you're gonna to try to figure out how many you see and how you saw it. Then after I put it back down, I'll put it back up and you can look at it again for a little bit longer and try to figure out, did you see the same amount as the first time? Do you need to revise your thinking, which is always okay? And what were the ways that you saw that amount? So today we're gonna start with an image that is of elevator buttons. So 
Get ready because remember that first time I'm gonna show it to you very quickly for four seconds. So let's get started. All right, how many elevator buttons do you think you saw? And how did you see them? Let's go ahead and look again. All right, see if you saw them the same way. Maybe you're seeing them differently. Maybe you need to revise your thinking. Remember, all of that is okay. All right, how many elevator buttons did you see? If you said seven, you are correct. There are seven elevator buttons. Let's double check by counting by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, what are the different ways that you might have seen seven elevator buttons? Maybe you were like me and you saw some groups. I saw a group of three and another group of three. And I remembered that three plus three is a double and three plus three is six plus one more equals seven. Hmm, what's another way to share our thinking or show our work? Maybe you counted by twos. Let's try that. Two, four, six, and seven. There's another way. There's probably even more ways. So maybe right now you can turn to somebody at home or a stuffed animal you have around you and tell them how you saw the seven elevator buttons. Okay, let's get ready for our next image. It is of some dots. Remember, I'm only gonna show it for four seconds very quickly, so make sure you're looking. All right, let's get started. All right, how many dots do you think you saw? Let's go ahead and look at it again, figuring out how many we saw and how we saw them. All right, I'll give you a chance to look at it again. Revise your thinking if you need to. And think of the different ways you can see this amount. All right, how many dots were there? If you said 14, you are correct. Now let's talk about some different ways that we saw 14. Maybe you counted by ones. Let's double check and make sure there's 14 counting by ones. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. All right, what are some other ways that you saw 14? Maybe you noticed that there were two 10 frames and this one had seven, because you saw five and two, and then you noticed the second bottom one was the same, there were five and two. So you knew this was gonna be a double of seven plus seven. And seven plus seven equals 14. Maybe there was a different way you saw it. For me, I saw it using a strategy called making 10, and making a 10. So what I did is I knew this top 10 frame, that if it was full, it was gonna be 10. And that I saw there were three empty spots, so I would need to move three of these dots from here up to here to fill it up. So those three moving up there would make this 10 frame full and make it a 10. Then I need to add the other dots that are still down here in this 10 frame. And I counted them one, two, three, and four, and knew that the amount in that 10 frame was four. So then I would have to add 10 plus four to make 14. All right, maybe there's another way that you saw this. You can turn to someone at home or to a stuffed animal and tell them if there was a different way that you saw this. Maybe take this time right now to see if there's even another way to figure out how many you see there. All right, we are all done with our quick images and our lessons for today. It has been so much fun to be with you these three days this week. I've enjoyed all of our math learning together. Have an awesome Friday, and we miss you at Seattle Public Schools.
Thank you everyone for tuning in. Bye.